coming up tonight on YCN News. The U.S. may strengthen its relationship with Cuba. The Unity School Board is seeking action against the architect of the elementary school building. And the City of Lebanon discusses its budget. For more news, weather, and sports, it's time for YCN, your local view. Now, your daily digest of the Dartmouth Lake Sunapee region, southern Vermont, and Windsor County. News, sports, weather, and all that is happening in our area. The news on YCN, your local view. Good evening, and welcome to this Wednesday edition of YCN News. I'm Erin McCory. Vermont Governor Peter Shumlin just announced that his single-payer health care plan would be too expensive to move forward at this time. He says tax rates would be too great. We will bring you more on this story tomorrow. There could be a thaw in the 50-year frosty relationship between the U.S. and Cuba, and a member of the Vermont congressional delegation is playing a role in this unfolding story. After five years in captivity, American contractor Alan Gross was released from a Cuban prison today, and Vermont Senator Patrick Leahy was among the group who flew to Cuba today to bring Gross home. In a picture on CNN.com, Gross appears very thin, but able to stand on his own and a smile across his face. Gross worked for the Federal Agency for International Development when the Cuban government in 2009 accused him of being a spy. Now, President Obama says it's time for the two nations to begin talking about establishing full diplomatic relationships with one another. Says Vermont Independent Senator Bernie Sanders, re-establishing diplomatic relations would ease travel and economic restrictions between the two nations. Americans would be able to visit Cuba from the U.S., says Sanders, and U.S. companies, including Vermont, could sell goods and services in the island nation. U.S. Representative from Vermont Peter Welch agrees with Sanders, according to a separate statement. Welch praises Leahy for the senior senator's quiet and persistent work with world diplomats to free gross. Turning to New Hampshire news, Attorney General Joseph Foster will hold a press conference today regarding Nathaniel Kibbe. Kibbe is a suspect in the 2013 kidnapping of Conway teenager Abigail Hernandez. Kibbe faces a charge of felony kidnapping. Hernandez, then 14 years old, did not return home one fall day from school. She returned home in July of this year. While much information regarding her disappearance remains unknown, the teenager identified Kibbe to police about a week after she returned to Conway. YCN News will update you on this story tomorrow. The Unity School Board and its legal representative are making good on a promise to taxpayers to see if legal action against the new grade school's original architect is warranted. Architect Scott Vaughn and his company Vaughn Associates began the project in 2012. After building delays, including twice asking voters for more money to complete the school, Vaughn agreed to step away from the project and let another contractor take over, reports the Valley News. At this year's March school district meeting, voters approved spending $2.75 million to complete the building. What began as a $4.7 million proposal by Vaughn to build a new school turned into a $9 million construction bill. YCN News will continue to follow this story. On tap tonight in Claremont, city councilors may review how much it costs to use the Claremont Savings Bank Community Center. The center's budget is under review according to the meeting's agenda, including fees. Ward 2 City Councilor Charlene Lovett is one elected official who questions if the fees are at the right price for services offered. The center opened in March 2013. We will have more on tonight's developments tomorrow. A majestic white building in Cornish, New Hampshire is getting some financial help from the state. Located in Cornish Flat, trustees charged with preserving the colonial area meeting house will receive a $7,500 grant from the New Hampshire Preservation Society to learn what improvements are needed. Two other grants are also in process. From the state's Land and Community Heritage Investment Program, $54,100 for repairs of windows, shingles, wood pillars, and other much-needed improvements. And from the Mascoma Grant Foundation, $7,500 for roof repairs. When YCN News returns, we'll bring you more news. The YCN News continues in a moment. For more news, weather, and sports, it's time for YCN, your local view. Welcome back to YCN News. I'm Erin McClory. In Lebanon, New Hampshire tonight, residents will get a look at the proposed 2015 city budget, a budget coming in at $52.7 million. Beginning at 7 p.m. in the council chambers of City Hall, meeting attendees will have the chance to weigh in on the spending plan. The 2014 budget is higher than what city officials believe will be needed to offer services next year. 
The current budget is $63.5 million. To learn more, go online to lebnh.net. In some circles, a local library is considered the town's living room. Now, in White River Junction, residents of this Hartford, Vermont village will keep that book lover space alive. Despite town manager Hunter Reesberg's recommendation to cut $15,000 from the village library, the select board acted differently, reports the Valley News. It's not just the White River Junction Library that's getting financial backing from the board. Money allocated for the respective libraries in Hartford, Queechy, and Wilder also are a bit higher than last year. Not so for the West Hartford Library. The board decided not to set aside $46,000 for that neighborhood library, recommending it use reserve funds to meet its costs for 2015. They may not have expected it, but Vermont residents who went to the state's online health insurance marketplace learned of a sign-up extension. Enrollees for health insurance that will begin J January 1st have until December 31st to sign up, according to an online news site, Vermont Digger. That's two weeks beyond the December 15th deadline New Hampshire health care insurance enrollees had. When YCN News returns, we'll join Laura James, who spoke with Leslie Sweat, a mortgage loan officer from Sugar River Bank. The YCN News continues in a moment. Welcome back to YCN News. I'm Erin McClory. Let's find out the weather and sports. Thanks, Erin. Tonight there is a chance of rain and snow showers. Lows will be around 30 degrees. Wednesday will be cloudy with a high near 37. Wednesday night will be mostly cloudy with a low around 26. Friday will be partly sunny with a high near 31. Friday night will be partly cloudy with lows dropping to 18 degrees. Let's turn to our YCN community calendar, which can be found in full at ycnnow.com calendar. Tomorrow in Norwich, Vermont, stop by Dan and Wits to donate desserts. Donations will benefit the Upper Valley Haven. On Friday, Bellows Falls will host a winter farmer's market at the train station from 4 p.m. to 7 p.m. Back in Norwich, check out the holiday celebration and ugly sweater contest at the Norwich Historical Society starting at 5.30 p.m. Remember, you can submit local events from your community by sending them to news at ycnnow.com. And now it's time for YCN Sports. Let's wrap up the weekend game results of the Manchester Monarchs. Although Friday's and Saturday's games were great victories, the Monarchs fell on Sunday to Providence Bruins 4-2. Manchester's Kevin Gravel scored first, giving the Monarchs a 1-0 lead. The Bruins then tied the game next. Brian O'Neill brought the score ahead with a goal in the second period. Providence scored two more goals to lead to the Monarchs' defeat. Thanks, Matt. When we return, we'll join Lisa Connell, who spoke with Alice Emmons from the Vermont House of Representatives. The YCN News continues in a moment. 